Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how I love calling his name. Nobody but Jesus. I want to confess to you on today that I am in love with Jesus. He's the absolute best thing that ever happened to me. He is the Lord of my life. My prayer for you on today is that Jesus is also your Lord, that you're in love with Jesus. He's the best thing that ever happened to you. That would make Jesus be our Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I'm excited to announce to you it is Jesus time. It is Jesus time. Aren't you glad about it? Jesus time is a good time. I don't know what happened to you the other night or last night, but he still Lord today. And if it had not been for Jesus, where would you be? Let's go and get in the word. We'll be as brief as the Holy Ghost will allow. I'm so glad that we have this opportunity today <clears throat> that we might again come together and agree that there is nothing and no one that can do us like Jesus can. Amen. Uh, listen, if you would, I want you to open your Bibles, Ephesians chapter number six, verse number uh, 12. Ephesians uh, chapter number six, verse number 12. I'm reading out the King James Version. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We got to talk about uh, breaking the system. We uh, are so busy uh, taking and uh, uh, attacking one another uh, that uh, that Paul writes to the church of Ephesus and said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You got to be careful. We get, take heed that when we uh, bite and devour one another, that we be not consumed one of another. It's easy to lose track of who the real enemy is <laughs> and what's really going on. It's not that we... Uh, uh, it's not that people are bad. There's a bad system and the bad system, it then perpetuates uh, evil because what happens is when we're, uh, when we're enticed, uh, when our lust, our lust gives way to sin and then sin gives way to death. It's the system that's messed up. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. The thing that got us really feeling bad is not, uh, it's not so much just that there's bad stuff that happens uh, or that bad things are happening to good people or any of those kind of any of those kind of things that you might uh, subscribe to. What really what really bothers you, what really gets under our skin is that uh, the system, uh, it happens. So anybody who gets into the system, see a principality means that is the place where the prince then rules or has a um, and assigned laws, rules, regulations, that when you're under the principalities, you're under then those powers, those rules, and those regulations. A lot of times we fall under those things and we come into an area and instead of us instead of us operating in joy or giving the love of Jesus, we're st instead moved into heaviness, moved into hardness, and moved into sadness because we enter into that principality. But we're called, listen to this, uh, that's what we're called to wrestle against principalities and powers and against the rules of darkness and against spiritual wickedness in high places that we're called to wrestle against those things and bring those things into into captivity or in other words stop those things from hindering us from doing jesus stuff why because there's a system in place uh, jesus said uh, take no thought for the moral for sufficient is the evil of today there is enough stuff already in place when you enter into an atmosphere uh that you um that you, if you don't wrestle with it, if you just let it happen, you're going to find yourself every day miserable, every day degraded, every day depression. That's why we are so highly medicated. Why? Because there's so much depression and oppression because of the system. Everybody's messed up. The system. Everybody's crazy. The system. Everybody's confused. It's the system. Uh, let's keep going. Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 17 through verse number 21. Um, uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. This is against the system. Come on, stay with me. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints that is in spite of what you're seeing you got to understand what jesus called you to be and what he's doing verse 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working listen to this y'all of his mighty power i believe that he got all power and there is nothing too hard for my god that means that no matter what it is the system got to move out the way that no matter what it is it has to conform to his will verse 20 which we wrought which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him as his own right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 21, for above all principality and power 
and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world that which is to come. Let me read it again. Verse 21, for above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Do you understand what that means? That means it doesn't matter what it is at the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow. It got to move out the way far above all principal. He said, you got to understand what power you're working with. Yes, there is the principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places, but you are called to operate in Jesus. And he has exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according. I believe that no matter what, he got all power. He got to work it out. We believe Romans 8 and 28, all things work together for the good. We believe that if he said it, he will bring it to pass. But he has far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. And every name that is named. Do you know uh, that uh, cancers are at an all time high, but the name of Jesus is above every name that is named. Every name that is named. Suicide is at an all time high, but the name of Jesus is above every name that is named. And then this and this, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. There is neither, there is no other name given under heaven whereby man must be saved. There's all power is in that name. All right, bear with me just a little while longer. First John chapter number three, verse number eight. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You got to understand, uh, you can't just keep talking about what the devil is doing and how bad it is out here. The devil's doing this and the devil's doing that. That's why Jesus showed up. So whatever the devil's doing, it will not work. The devil is a liar. Oh, I pray you hear me right here. He was manifest. The Son of God was manifest that he might destroy that means you can't you can't destroy something that don't exist that he's trying to work there is some work there's some things that's going on there's some principalities and some powers but when jesus shows up he showed up that he might destroy the works of the devil uh, he said he said uh, john said that uh he said the devil sinned from the beginning uh that that that's where this is coming from, that all disobedience is sin and that uh, the whole world is operating in this disobedience. But that's why Jesus showed up, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So I want to announce to you, I don't know what he's doing around you. I don't know what works are working against you, but Jesus has manifested. He has showed up. He is available. And so whatever the devil's doing, it will not work. It will not work. Luke, um, Gospel according to Luke, verse number 10, um, chapter number 10, excuse me, uh, verse number one uh, through verse number nine. After these things, the Lord appointed over 70 also and sent them two and two before his face in every city and place, whether he uh, himself would come. Therefore said unto him, unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither person nor script nor shoes and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, peace be in this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it, not if not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give you, for the labor is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. Stay with me. Verse 8. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things that are set, set before you, and heal the sick that are in the, that are therein. And say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Understand what just happened right here. The Bible said Jesus sent them out in twos, the 70 and twos. He said, go your way. Behold, I'm sending you as a, I'm sending you forth as lambs amongst wolves. I know that there is principalities, power, spiritual wickedness in high places, but I want you to go and I don't need you to carry nothing extra. I got you already covered. And when you go, step into the house and tell them peace be in this house. And if the son of peace be there, then the peace shall rest on it. And he said, when you go into the city and they receive you, whatever they give you, eat and then heal the sick that are in the city. 
You don't understand because that's where we're breaking all that principality, all those powers, all those things that say we got to be sick. We got to be broken down. We got to be messed up. We got to be angry. But the devil is a liar. We ain't got to be none of those things. We're Jesus people. He said, but I want you to then tell them the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. There's a whole different uh, power that is available. There's a whole different authority that's available that when we step into the kingdom, we're stepping out of principalities and powers and into authority and grace. Uh, Jesus said, in this world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've already overcome this world. You ain't got to worry about his name's above every other name. He's above all principalities and all powers. And so we then, then he said, um, he said, I want you to heal them and tell them that's how the kingdom works. Y'all ain't hearing me. You can't tell me my God ain't good. He said, I want you to go in there and I want you to heal him in the name of Jesus and tell him healing's in the kingdom. I want you to let your peace uh, lay over the house, uh, even though uh, with what they've been living under, they ain't had no peace and then tell them peace is in the kingdom. I want you to go in there and I want you to let your joy permeate the whole, the whole uh, city. And I want you to tell them that joy is in the kingdom. I want you to go over there and overtake whatever spirit power that was over that house before and you tell them that victory is in the kingdom. It's all in there. It's all in there. Lastly, but certainly not least, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 7, 8, and 9. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our, unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the thing that God has prepared for them that love him. Listen to what it says. It says, look, we got this, we got this wisdom, this hidden wisdom, which he ordained before the world began for our glory for our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. If they had known what was working, uh, uh, they wouldn't have been working against it. If they had known what he was and who he was, they wouldn't have been working against him. But then Jesus said, listen, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. But what did the Lord of glory do? He said, behold, I give you the keys to the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. But don't worry, the, uh, the enemy can't see it. The princes of this world, they can't see it. They don't know it. But it is real. Written, I have not seen. You better come in here. Nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the thing which God has already prepared, preordained. It's already in the kingdom, already available. We got to tear the devil's kingdom down so we can build the kingdom of Jesus up. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up above the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Listen, it's Jesus time. We got to tear some of these things down. We can't just allow ourselves to be caught up in the system because we're Jesus people, because we're we're a peculiar people, because we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, that to show forth the praise of them that brought uh, him that brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're built different. We're made different. We're supposed to be a city set upon a hill. We're the salt of the earth. We are his light in this world. We're supposed to operate differently. It don't work the same for us because we're built different. We operate under a different authority. And in a different kingdom, we can just call on his name at the name of Jesus. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's what happens when the enemy's operating in these principalities and powers. All you got to do is call on his name and the name of Jesus. So I want to remind you that we're not called to co we're not called to cooperate with this system. We're called to tear this system down in the name of Jesus. And there's still power. There's still victory. There's still miracles in that name. I believe and I pray you believe it too. Listen, I'm done right there. It is Jesus time. Aren't you glad about it? Aren't you glad about it? It certainly is Jesus time. If ever uh, you need a Jesus in your life. You need him right now. I want to give you this last call. This call for salvation. Confess to you that Jesus come down the flesh over 2,000 years ago. He suffered, bled, died on the cross. He went down the grave, stayed there three days and three nights. On the third day, Jesus rose again with all power in heaven and on earth. If you believe that with all of your heart, repent of your sin, confess with your mouth that Jesus, he did rise again. You shall be saved. The Bible said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I encourage you. I implore you. If you have not tried Jesus, try him for yourself. You don't got to be holy. You don't got to be sanctified. None of that to try him. You ain't got to love him. All you got to do is try him and you'll find out that he already loves you. And you. I promise if you try him, you won't be able to help but love him. I tried Jesus for myself and he's the best thing that ever happened in my life. If you made Jesus your choice on the day, reach out to me at coj1.org. Drop a line. Let's celebrate Jesus together. Lift up his name and just thank him for all that he has done in the name of Jesus. 
those of you who are reconfirming yourself to his will, word, and way today and just make up your mind that he's been too good. He brought me too far. I can't let go now. I want you to reach out to me at clj1.org. Let's celebrate, lift up the name of Jesus together. He's still moving. He's still mighty. And he's still great and greatly to be praised. Um, thank you, Jesus. Those of you... Um, right now who are in the household of faith those of you who are believers i want you to believe together with me we're going to agree together in faith that our god is still moving that there's some people still need him that he's still working out that there's nothing too hard for our god that he's greater than any principality and power that his name is above every other name that there is nothing no one can do like jesus can there's somebody who's going through a hard time uh, they're going through a desert season they're going through depression oppression they're in a dark time uh, they're going through hard stuff heavy stuff and they can't see the light of day but we believe that jesus is already moving i want you to agree with me by faith he's already heading that direction that he's lifting up their bow down heads he's breaking that yoke uh, off their life, that he's uh, renewing, re restoring their joy, he's renewing their strength, that he's delivering them and setting them free right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to believe today that Jesus, he's our healer, that he's paid the price to heal every sickness, every pain, every disease. So we're going to bring him everything, everything that's bothering you, everything that ain't working right, uh, everything from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet that's not cooperating or doing as it was designed to do, everything that's been diagnosed, undiagnosed, every medication you've taken, every schism in your body, we're laying it down before his throne to carry that he was already a uh, wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, chastised for our peace. And with his stripes, we are healed. And we claim our healing today and receive it even right now in the name of Jesus. But I want you to agree with me. He's not just our healer. He's the healer. He can't just heal somebody, a few bodies. He can heal anybody that he's already paid the price. There's some people who right now need Jesus. Know, need to know that Jesus has a healing touch, that he is on their side, that he loves them, uh, that right now he's moving in their direction. Somebody who's in the hospice care, emergency care, critical care, palliative care, whatever their care is, Jesus cares for them. And we believe right now he's laying hands on their infirmity. Counseling out their disease, removing their, uh, removing whatever is hurting, uh, con con reforming their body and turning their body back unto unto healing, unto wholeness. And somebody's getting out of their bed of affliction. Somebody's being healed, and somebody's being made whole today, right now, in the name of Jesus. That name is above it. every other name. In Jesus' name. I want you to believe in me that Jesus is the Savior. He can save anybody. His arms are not short and that he cannot save. He is able. He's more than able. That even right now, his arms are outstretched. He's moving in somebody's direction. Somebody today is having visitation with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They've been baptized in the blood of the Lamb. Their sins are being washed. Their transgressions are being forgiven. Their iniquities are being blotted out. They're putting Jesus on the day. They're falling in love with Jesus right now and declaring Jesus he is the best thing that ever happened to me. If you believe with me today that Jesus is healing, saving, and delivering. Somebody shout thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, it's giving time in the house of the Lord. Um, the Bible said that, um, that we ought not give grudgingly or necessity, but God, God loves a cheerful giver. Um, we ought to give unto Jesus. He has given unto us. If you have a heart to give, I want you to reach out to us at clj1.org. There you'll find some avenues that you might be able to give electronically if you're unable to do so. Please reach out to us at clj1.org and just leave a message and let us know that you're trying to give your offering and you don't have a way to facilitate that. And we will do our best to help you do what it is in your heart to do as you have purpose. Uh, those of you who have given to the IIF offering, we thank Thank Jesus for you. Those of you are purpose to do so. We thank Jesus for you. Those who you are praying about doing so, we thank Jesus for you. And I thank Jesus for all of you because he's truly using you and he's truly opening doors and he's not finished yet. Aren't you glad about it? Hold on. Help is on the way. I believe it. I stand on it and I know that Jesus will do it. He will perform it. He will bring it to pass. I want you to understand that on today, we are not helpless or hopeless or hapless. We are Jesus people. Jesus said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'm with you always. Sometimes you just got to remind the atmosphere, remind your neighborhood, remind your house, remind them on the job. I'm not by myself. I am not my own. I've been bought with the price. I'm Jesus, people. And Jesus, he loves me. And that means the promise is already done. That means it's already settled. It's already finished. And we claim it and believe it by faith in Jesus' name. Oh, if you believe it, just shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I know Jesus loves you. I know he does. I know he does. I love you in Jesus' name, but I know Jesus, he loves you best. Listen, you don't have to worry about tomorrow because Jesus, he's with you today. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Yes, he is. Have a beautiful day in Jesus.